I think the key thing is the fact that we want women to understand that, 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 um, um, that, and that we're listening to them. So the two key kind of legislation pieces that come out of this is the fact that we're banning virginity testing and homeopathy, and we're also raising the age of consent for marriage. So that the clause that allowed many young people to be subjected to child marriage is now going to be removed. But ultimately, we're also going to be doing more in order to be tackling um, street sexual harassment. Well, doing more on street sexual harassment, but the Home Secretary has declined to make it a crime right away. She's only considering it. Are you disappointed? Have you been let down by her? No, I'm not disappointed because what we're doing is really like, you know, making it clear to that there are pieces of legislations out there that, that, that already cover the things that Gemma and other activists have been complaining about and really seeing where the evidence takes us. So if these pieces of legislation are not hard enough or are not achieving the things that we want, then I'm, I'm more than happy to actually sp sp um, speak to the Home Secretary again. Harriet Harman, you've been campaigning for years to make sexual harassment in public places a particular offence. Is this a cop-out that it hasn't been done today? Well, I think it will be if it's not actually in the bill that the government's going to bring forward towards the end of the year. So I think they've really got to do that because there is general agreement that women should not have to put up with it. They should not, you know, you shouldn't have a situation where in the dark on her way home from school on her own, a schoolgirl is followed and pestered and menaced. Why should a man be able to do that and get away with it? So I think there is general agreement that it's not acceptable and that something needs to be done about it. But the thing that needs to be done about it is to change the law so that women and girls know they can complain and men know that if they do it, they'll have their driver's license taken away and they'll end up in court and that will stop them doing it. So it's curb crawling, wolf whistling, the whole array? It's pestering, it's unwanted advances, menacing, following, curb crawling it's all that sort of thing which is a universal experience it was back when i was a, a schoolgirl and a young woman but in those days it was like well you'd better just put up with it or even be flattered that some man should consider to follow you and now i think that there is an expectation that women you know like Gemma and nimco are saying no we're not going to put up with this and we want something done about it Gemma tutton you're 16 what kind of experiences that harriet's been talking about made you want to become a campaigner? I mean, I think, so the first time that I experienced public sexual harassment was when I was in primary school, when I was 11 years old. Um, and it was terrifying because I didn't have any education about what it meant. And it left my 15, 16 year old sister having to explain to me that I would have to experience worse things from this every single day of my life. Um, and I think people really underestimate just how ingrained it is in our, our brains like e even just me I'm going to college you know next next year and the first thing that I heard about it was the road on the way there is awful for public sexual harassment and I think it's absolutely disgraceful that this country hasn't done it in the past but I'm so proud that we are taking those steps now and I mean obviously we have a long way to go but this is a great start. Do you believe things are changing that people in authority the government the police prosecutors are they listening to your generation? I mean, I definitely think that there has been a big change. The words public sexual harassment were not in common vocabulary. And so our streets now started our campaign two years ago. Um, I mean, and now obviously this new strategy has is happening. Um, so I do think people are listening, but um, I'm not sure that we're being taken as seriously as we'd like to be. When you think about the deaths of Sarah Everard, Nicole Smallman, Biba Henry, every three days a woman is killed in this country at the hands of a man. Shouldn't we really be talking about a fundamental overhaul of the way society treats women? I definitely think we do have need to have a different social contract because I think like you know at the moment 50% of the population women are living a completely different reality to the other 50% and as much as there's three women sat standing here today we need men to be part of that conversation as well and for them to understand that this is not acceptable for violence against women and girls is preventable and I think that's the key thing that I want to say men make choices in order to harm and hurt women and society has to call that out and from the public sexual harassment and to like you know um, other th um, other things that are happening there are things that are being looked at as low-grade um, harassment which actually lead to the uh, to the bigger things such as as a rape and domestic violence and everything else so I do believe in a world where women can not only be free from violence but also the fear of it and for me I think that is the most corroding thing in my life is the fact that I know so many women who have been raped or abused but at the same time men don't seem to know anybody who's actually raped or abused so I want to actually put a call out there to say to men that you're, you're in spaces where you can have these conversations take these strategies and, and, and help us create a society that's safe for all of us. 
do you think boys at school, at your school, in your education, are being educated properly at the moment? No, not, not at all. I think that there is a disgusting uh, culture of rape culture in schools. Um, and, you know, boys, it's in school where boys learn that they can get away with, with sexually harassing comments and, and making, feels, making girls feel uncomfortable. I mean, everything from sharing nudes to, to showing girls pornography. I mean, I've seen it all. I've basically experienced it all. School is where it starts. And that is why, obviously, legislation is so important. But education needs to be at the core of, of this campaign and, and this movement because we need to, to get to boys before they, before they see that they can get away with it. And we need to get to girls before they feel that shame and embarrassment of the sexual harassment that they face. Harriet, if I may call you, you're a veteran campaigner on this, uh, standing alongside established campaigner and someone relatively new to it. When you hear Gemma talking about her experiences, do you think that in some ways things have got worse over the decades you've been campaigning? Well, I think Actually, it makes me feel optimistic that there is such a determination now amongst this generation not to put up with what we had to put up with. And also, that there's been an agreement reached, as Nimco said, that there does need to be a new social contract, if you like. But I think it wouldn't take very many men in court and then all over social media for the fact that they've been harassing a, a schoolgirl to make men stop and think and change their behaviour because most of the men who are doing this, they don't think they're doing sexual harassment. They think they're law-abiding men who are doing some banter. They're choosing to overlook the fact that they are absolutely terrorising the woman who's on the dark street on her own. And so therefore I think that a new law can make a big difference and I feel optimistic because there are 200 women in Parliament now they are there to do this sort of thing. There are women in government now. There's a woman Home Secretary. If they're not going to do that, well, who is and what were we there for? Since the pilgrimage to this bandstand a few months ago, do you think there has been tangible change? No, there, there has been um, change. There's been awareness within the context of this country, the fact that things need to be done. I was at university when Joanne Yates was murdered in Bristol, and, and I remember the police telling us to stay at home, and then me, for the first time ever, starting to go on Reclaim the Night Marches. For the first time, nobody was able to say that. Women were able to take to the streets and actually inform and ask the government in order to be able to do something. We reopened the consultation after the Sarah Everett uh, murder, and we got 150,000 submissions because of that, and because people people really wanted to share things with the government. So it, it would be really a miss for us not, not to listen and really un, um, understand that people want things to change and things will be changing.